Welcome everyone to this lecture series on retrieval augmented generation. Let's get started with part one, where we're going to actually show you just an example of getting some text, embedding it, and then storing those embeddings with a vector store. I'm gonna head over to a notebook. All right, so here I am in my notebook. So first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set up some example documents. These are just gonna be Python strings, but later on I'll show you how to do things like read in other files like PDFs. Keep in mind, pretty much every PDF or document like your own PowerPoint or your own Word documents or your own .text files, they're all gonna be different. So there's no generalized way to have it always work. I just wanna point that out now that a big part of RAG is figuring out how to read in your specific documents. So to keep it simple and to make sure you can follow along as you're learning RAG, I'm gonna create two dictionaries. One's gonna be sports news text and the other is going to be uh, like finance news text. And I'm just gonna make some stuff up here. So let's say that the title of this news article, you can imagine maybe I'm accessing uh, some Python API for a newspaper and I read in the sports section. And let's say the text is something like the San Francisco 49ers not even sure how you spell that, are, are heading to the Super Bowl. And we'll say in a football showdown. You can imagine that you know the article could be a lot longer, but we're keeping things simple for now. And if you want, you can just copy and paste these documents from our notebooks. Remember, we have an embeddings and rag folder for you. There's a full embedding notebook here where we have these kind of document examples that you can check out. We also later on are gonna show you how to read in a PDF file. You can see we made up like some Wonka chocolate facility rules.pdf that we'll use for rag as well, just to give you kind of a more realistic file upload situation. But for right now, since we're learning, let's start with these kind of original documents, so to speak. And I'm just holding them as dictionaries because they'll have a title and text. And let's do the same thing for like a finance news text. So we'll say finance news text. We'll set that equal to, let's say the title is the finance section. And then I'm going to say that the text is something like uh, Metastock has reached all time highs due to its big push in AI research. Um, okay, so we have our sports news, we have our finance news, and then what we're going to do is load an embedding model. So once you have your documents, you do need to create like a vector store, and in order to do that, we need to use an embedding model. So first things for, first, I need to uh, say google.generative AI as gen AI and then configure it with my API key, which I've already imported. So remember, you could always just pass in your string. I won't show that for you know safety reasons here. And I've already defined API key. Again, that's just everything we've been doing from before. But remember, when we listed our models, so if I say for model in gen AI list models available, some of the models that were available, if I check these out, in fact, I'm just gonna print out the name of the model. So I have the older legacy ones like Chat Bison, Text Bison, Embedding Gecko, the Gemini Pro and Gemini Pro Vision models, but there's kind of a special one here and it's the embedding model. So as we mentioned in the lectures on how a large language model works, the model has the ability to just take in text and spit out the vector embedding without needing to produce the actual text that it thinks is gonna come next. So I could pass in the text like San Francisco 49ers are heading to the Super Bowl and then ask the model to continue that text, or I could just ask it for the vector embedding representation, which is what I'm gonna do. I just need to make sure I'm calling the model correctly. And it's the models slash embedding dash 001. So let's check this out. I'm gonna create the vector embeddings and I'm gonna do the following. I'm going to say my sports embedding vector is equal to gen AI. And since I'm using an embedding model, I need to use the embed content. So I'm not generating content, I'm embedding content. And then I need to pass in the model name that I want to use. Currently there's only one embedding model available. Keep in mind in the future that may change. It doesn't really matter which embedding model you use as long as you're consistent. Remember, you can't like just swap in embedding 001 and then embedding 002 in the future because they're using different dimensions. And then we'll say that the content that I want to embed is equal to sports 
news text, and I'll pass in text there. And the last thing I'm going to mention is we are going to specify a task type. And here, what I really want the embedding to be able to do is retrieve the document. So the task type here, if you look this up in the documentation, is retrieval underscore document. Basically implies that I'm using this to retrieve the document. So I'll be running similarity searches against these vectors. That's nice because later on we'll see when we perform cosine similarity, I can basically just do a dot product of these vectors to make the math really simple because it's just a retrieval document task type. That will make more sense when we actually perform the comparison. So if I run that, this is typically going to be a lot faster than generating text because you're only doing like half of the model, just doing the embedding part. And if I take a look at the type that sports embedding vector is, it's a dictionary. So what are the keys of that dictionary? It's really just a single key of embedding. So let's check out that embedding. So my embedding is just a vector of values. So these are all the kind of uh, vector representations along different dimensions for what it thinks is the vector representation of that string. If you take a look at the length of this, it's 768 dimensions. All right, so we can do that again for the finance embedding vector. What I can also do is just create a function for this process. So if I wanted to, I could copy and paste this and then just say instead of sports, finance, and then instead of sports news text, I'll say finance news text, and I basically run the same process, but now for the finance article. I will, since I'm going to run this a bunch of times, and I need to run this on the new queries, what I probably should do is just create a nice easy to use function called something like embed text. It takes in some text, and then it's going to return that process of gen AI, embed content, the model I'm choosing is, you know, models embedding 001. The content that I'm passing in is just a string. So it's just going to be the text that's passed into the function. And then I'm going to say that the task type, again, is retrieval. Whoops, make sure we spell that right. Retrieval underscore document. Now, remember, if I just ran this, that would actually return the dictionary. I'm really just interested in this embedding. So what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to grab that embedding. So keep in mind that embed text, this directly returns the embedding array, so to speak. Now, if I take a look at the actual type that's returned here by sports embedding vector, you should note that it's a list. We're not going to be able to run cosine similarity searches on a list. Later on, we'll need to introduce the numerical Python library known as NumPy to convert this to a NumPy array, and then I will be able to perform similarity searches. So what have we done so far? And again, if we take a look at the notebook we're following along with, I've read in some original documents, so to speak. I kind of just made them up here. Later on, we'll kind of show you how to read in PDF documents. Then I loaded the embedding model. And then I've created my vector embeddings and I've created a function to basically automate that process where I could just pass in some text and get back the direct vector. So I need to store these embeddings. Remember, I need to have a robust way to, when I get a vector, immediately go to the text. A great way to do that at the start is just to use something like pandas. I want to point out there's a ton of companies and different startups and different open source libraries that offer vector store. One that I like to use is called Chroma DB. That's Chroma DB has a great Python interface. Another one that's really famous is uh, Pinecone. And you know, there's a new startup in this space created every day. Uh, Chroma DB is open source, so I'd recommend you kind of check them out. Really easy to use in Python. It's beyond the scope of this course, but you can check out our, their offerings for more information on that. Or the open source documentation is really quite good as well. When you're learning, however, I would suggest in order to kind of see what's going on behind the scenes, that you build that out yourself first. And you'll realize that the vector store is not really anything complicated. It's basically just almost like a spreadsheet that has the text connected to the vector. So I'm going to create a new data frame. We'll say PD data frame. And let's grab our documents. So our documents, remember that's the, let's pass it in as a list. So a list of our documents, we have the finance news text and the sports news text. 
we'll actually re-embed them. So again, my documents, notice how I have them as dictionaries. So now it's a list of these dictionaries with the title and the text. Having that title is going to be useful because I can later use that as like a source. You'll see what I mean when we actually run the similarity. So we'll say df is equal to pd dot data frame of my documents. And now I have this nice data frame with the title and the text. And if I wanted to, I could always edit these columns themselves. So I can always say columns is equal to and pass in a list of what I want the column names to be. Um, title and text is fine. Maybe I want the T to be capitalized on them. So I can say, you know, capital T title and capital T text, but it's really up to you as long as you're uh, always referencing it correctly. So I have this data frame, it's looking good, but I need to apply the embeddings to have a third column that matches this text to its vector embedding. What's nice about this is I already have a function that can do that, and Pandas makes it really easy to just apply that function to every item in a particular column. So what I can do is just say the following. My embeddings column is equal to the text column where I apply that function, and I just call embed text. Notice here, I'm not actually executing the function, so I don't have an extra set of parentheses here. I'm just passing in the function. Pandas itself will apply it for us. All right, so let's go ahead and run that and then check out what our data frame looks like. So now I have a title, a text, and the vector embedding representation of that text. And this is basically now my vector store. So what I'm going to need to do next is figure out how to perform a similarity search. Let's go ahead and do that. So what's really nice about this is because I asked for a retrieval document vector, basically the outcome of the dot product is going to directly align with a cosine similarity. So I can just say the following, import numpy as np, and I'm gonna create a function off of this. Keep in mind, I have a more uh, in-depth description of how this is working in similarity search in the notebook. Again, kind of explaining the dot product there, but really all we're doing is we're just figuring out, hey, if I give you two vectors, how similar are they? So we'll say query similarity score. We're just gonna return a score of how similar a query is to a vector. So why am I passing in a query? Well, remember the query, that's gonna be the actual user text. So that's something like, um, tell me about football sports news or something like that. So that's the actual text query. So again, that's a text string the vector, that's going to be an actual array. Technically, it's a Python list, but using NumPy, we can have it as an array internally. So I just want to be very clear here. I'm expecting the user query to be a string because remember our discussion of the RAG process, I need to embed that query string to an array and then figure out, hey, how similar is it to this particular vector? I'm only going to do one vector at a time in this function because remember, I could just apply that function now to all my embeddings here. So what is this going to look like? I need the query embedding where we say embed text to the query. So that's kind of step one. So I'm going from you know the text string. So from query string, I'm directly going to the Python list. And now I need to perform a mathematical similarity between those two lists. In order to do that, I need to make sure that NumPy is going to be used in order to actually perform the similarity. So I can say return np dot between the query embedding and the existing vector. So again, the query, that's a text string. The vector is a singular existing embedding here, which means I can, or I will have to, pass in a query, like tell me about football sports, embed it into a vector, and then do that vector comparison for every item here, and then I'll sort them by similarity score. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna have a query here that says something like, uh, any interesting news about meta stock performance today? And let's try this out. I'm gonna say df similarity is equal to df, the embeddings column, and then I'm just going to apply 
and I'm going to apply the actual uh, function here. And remember, the query is going to stay the same. So I can be a little clever here and use a lambda expression. So we'll say lambda vector query similarity score. And then I pass in that query and the vector and then close it off with two sets of parentheses. Just to quickly explain, if you haven't seen this pandas syntax before, this is super common when you're dealing with apply and pandas and you're trying to apply a function that takes in two parameters. So why am I using lambda here? And why did I not use it here? Well, embed text just takes in a singular argument. Remember embed text, if we call it up here, it just take, took in the actual string text. It's a little different now with my query similarity score because it needs to take in the query, which technically doesn't change. It's always the same query for this. And then it needs to take in the vector. So the way to do that within pandas is to simply say the following, df embeddings, and then I'm gonna say apply. And then lambda is just a lambda expression. It's kind of a shorthand for a function. Then I have vector. Vector is what's the stand-in or the variable for each vector embedding there. And then, whoops, let me make sure I didn't just drag that along. There we go. DF embeddings. So then I have the vector, and that's what I'm passing in to query similarity score. So the query always stays the same. It's always, hey, any interesting news about Metastock performance today? But the vector changes as it goes along that column. So let's run this. And then I'm going to ask for my data frame. And notice now I have a similarity score. Something to note here, that means every time you're gonna perform RAG on a new user query, you're gonna to have to check the similarity with every single text document. There's kind of no way around that if you're performing cosine similarity search as your RAG base, as your retrieval augmented generation base. That's why certain libraries like ChromaDB or Pinecone, et cetera, really try to optimize for that idea of what's the fastest way I can figure out that similarity. It's not a big deal for us right now because we only have two documents, but you can imagine if you have thousands of documents, this process of checking the similarity against every document could take some time. So what have I done so far? I've created the text, I have a vector embedding, and now I have a similarity score for each query. And it makes sense here that the meta stock text article is more similar, 0.86, than the sports section, which was only 0.66. Keep in mind, it's really hard to internalize or understand these similarities on some sort of uh, intuition level. So it's hard to say like, oh, this is the difference between like 0.85 similarity versus 0.86. You can only just broadly say that, you know, the higher the number here up to one means they're similar. If they're one, then they're basically the exact same document. Um, and then if they're negative one, that will mean they're like the exact opposite document. That's probably gonna be hard to see a negative document. Um, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so we have our similarity search here. And probably what I wanna do is just finish this all off with a function that basically does all of this for us. Really what I wanna do is grab the text here because what I need to finally do is inject that text as context using rag. So we've set up the vector store. I've done the similarity calculation, but I haven't actually extracted the text. So what would I need to do here? I would need to take my data frame and then I would need to sort the values based off that similarity column. So I would need to sort the values based off similarity and I would need to make sure I do it in ascending equals false order. So that by default was the same way it came back, but you may get you know unlucky and this is just two rows. So you know we had a 50-50 chance that it would kind of go in that direction. And it has to do with the fact that I believe it's an alphabetical order, F comes before S. But really what we wanna do is sort by similarity. So I'm sorting by similarity, but again, all I really want is that text there. Maybe I could also want the title as useful information. So that means I need to extract both title and text columns from this. Notice the use of double brackets here. Again, kind of going a little deeper into pandas syntax. So now I have that little subset here, but I don't want both of these. I just want the location zero because that's gonna be my top one. And there we have a pandas series where now I can just grab the title and text from this in order to grab both the title, maybe I want that for sourcing information and the text. So let's finish this off by creating a function that does all of this for us. So we'll say DEF is equal to most similar 
document and it takes in a query. And we're going to be using basically all the functions that we previously used. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to perform this calculation of similarity. So I'm going to copy and paste that. So that's kind of step one, figure out the similarity search here. I'll zoom out so you can see everything. So step one, figure out the similarity of that query versus all your existing embeddings. And then I'm going to grab the title. So we'll say title is equal to that, but then I just extract title there. And then we'll say the same for the text. Text is just df sort values, but extract the text there. And then I'm simply going to return a tuple of title text. All right, so let's try that out. I'm going to say most similar document, and then we'll say title text is equal to, do a little bit of tuple unpacking there, most similar document. Let's try it out, maybe the 49 or so. Uh, any news about the San Francisco 49ers today? Question mark. And then I'll ask for the title and the text. And it looks like it worked out. Perfect. Okay, so coming up next in part two, we're gonna show you how to inject that text as context using RAG, and we'll also expand to more real world documents. See you there.